Have you heard of the phrase adulting is a scam? If you are an adult, then you could have used it um, in one or two times of your life. Me, personally, I have. I think my guest today has used it. And um, the ultimate time when you start adulting is university life. It comes with a lot of hardships. It comes with a lot of, you know, growth. You know, growth is painful. That's why people call adulting a scam. And uh, because people expect you to be mature, and you know, in order for you to reach a level of saying, you know, I'm a very mature person, life should have hit you. Life could have hit you. So today my guest is um, here. She's called Julia from... She's going to introduce herself. She's going to introduce herself because I might give her a place or a title she doesn't want to be associated with. So, Julia, you're welcome to the Mental Health Show. Thank you, Edna. Uh, you can introduce yourself. I know you want to be known in every tea, what? <laughs> Uh, my name is Julia Mumuza. I am a final year student doing international business at Marke University Business School, Nakawa. <laughs> yes, Mums yes, Nakawa. Mums. Okay. Uh, Julia, what do you do aside from being a student? Because I know you do some things. <laughs> yes, uh, on top of me being so much into political spaces, mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm a business student, so sometimes I help out with my dad or even um, through internship and after internship, before my exams, I got a chance to be in the real business world. Ah, yeah. So Julia is a business No. <laughs> I have no talent or even, I've not even thought about myself as a business person, so yeah, I respect you for that. Now, um, tell me first of all, after you know the transition from high school you know in high school you're either confined in a dormitory when you're mm -hmm. confined in a dormitory uh at mango we uh, we had actually hostels uh -huh. though <laughs> to make it more like dormitory ish i was in a teacher's hostel that was actually inside school uh, more still, like so, <laughs> so you like. the, in high school me the high school i went to you're confined in a dormitory you have a matron to wake you up in the morning to go and read. You have prefects who are always telling you you're supposed to be in class. Like someone is always there reminding you. So six years you're done with with all that, and you're saying to yourself, ah, I can't wait to finish camp, uh, high school so that I can go to campus and you know no one has to push me around. I'm not getting punished for not going to class. Mm -hmm. And then you join campus. But when you join campus. You start to think adulting is a scam. Why is that? Um, you see, one of the easiest things that make you actually feel like, okay, now I'm becoming an adult and adulting is a scam. In, you see how in high school, even when it gets to your grades, like your parents will come talk to teachers. Mm -hmm. In university, it's all on you. If, mm. if a retech comes, if you're missing marks, no parent is going to come help you look for lecturers. You're going to do all that for yourself. On top of deciding if you should go to class or not, may actually catch up with you. You realize, okay, this whole semester, I've attended class like three times. Mm. It happened to me. I was in um, politics. Mm. So me trying to um, balance, you know, your parents do not even understand what university mm. is when you study. You, you you tell yourself, okay, I'll do it this way, but again, you realize because there is no one telling you that you should actually go to class, you may end up missing out on very many classes. So the reality hits you later when mm. the semester is almost ending. And very many things, man, everything is on you. Like, you know, in high school, you know you're going to go to school, they may even give you pocket money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like you money. <laughs> lunch is guaranteed. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't have money, lunch is guaranteed in high school. University, the truth is, uh, parents, if your parent is paying tuition, most of them are really focused on tuition uh -huh. and how you, you get data for online classes, mm -hmm. what you eat mm -hmm. usually ends up on you. Mm -hmm. Not that... Um, Sometimes parents cannot afford, but it's just that, um, okay, now you're at university, you're doing things your way, and usually oh, it's, it's not as easy yeah. as you in high school asking for mommy. Like somehow money. at campus, money is never enough. Even if it's, you have like a 500k, your parent has given you 
Five hundred k for the whole semester. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's never enough. Somehow it's I don't know. Yeah, I don't know so why. Mm. Somehow it's never enough mm. because even you see students and governments uh, sponsorship are given like six hundred k there. By the time you get that money, you may think you've actually gotten money, but mm. if a week or two passes and you still have that money, you're just keeping it there in your account. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Um. Okay. So. Aside from okay, yeah, I understand the fact that you you must like self drive here mm-hmm. is compulsory. Self drive that we are not taught while at school. Like I know schools where if even if you put down your stockings, they cane you, they punish you. There's no. Let me remind myself to pull up my stockings. <laughs> let me remind myself to wear uniform the right way. Let mm-hmm. me. There is a repercussion at the end. Now we are in a world where there are no repercussions. So no one is going to beat you for not attending class. <laughs> mm. No one is going to beat you for dressing a certain type of way. You kind of have to have the self-drive. So I think that's what you are like trying to explain. Like the fact that self-drive is compulsory can even be so it can take a toll on you. Um because the repercussions are mm, at the end it's it's I mean, you're going to fail class, you're going to have surgery text, you might even be discontinued, and you'll get hungry if you don't budget for 500k for four months. Yeah, like, <laughs> you get hungry. and you see that the reality of all that actually ends up putting the load on you, like you feel it. For example, you didn't realize the impact of you pushing yourself to do these classes, and later you realize maybe you have a backlog or mm. retake. So that is when like the reality kicks in. Mm. During the way, during the process, it's entirely on you. And you know, it just feels like, oh, then if I don't go, I'll, I'll find my way. Mm. Yes. So. Okay. Um, how about the expectations that society, your parents, your friends, your lecturers have on you? Um, when as as you start the adulting phase, eh, which is campus, the expectations they everybody expects you. Your parents expect you to bring a degree home. Your friends expect you to go out with them once in a while. Your um, what have they call them? Custodian expects you to mm. be up to speed with maybe hostel fee. Your lecturers expect you to get A's and you know they expect you to graduate yeah. your father is waiting for a degree and remember you also have like expectations from yourself uh-huh. like uh-huh. So, so how 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 do those affect your mental health they really do i think i've been to a point where personally i have my own aspirations mm-hmm. and things i really would kill for to have them mm-hmm. and once you decide to go into that space of making it happen for yourself you need to create a balance. So that is where the problem comes in because in reality, you cannot have a balance. Mm. So your lecturers um, expect you to maintain your grades. Mm -hmm. Your parents are coming from a family where the firstborn excelled with, I mean, he graduated with a first class. So they expect you to graduate with a first class. Mm -hmm. Um, As a business student, You know, when you read about qualifications, you want to leave university when you don't have only a degree, Mm -hmm. but also something extra that will Mm. make you different. So on top of what you want to do for yourself, maintain the grades, make your lecturers proud, your parents proud, it it becomes like um, really pressing when um, you start realizing that I'm actually losing on this side as I pursue this one. Sometimes you may actually end up losing at all of them. I saw that in my political journey when I lost the election, Mm. but also my GPA was kind of affected. Not so bad, but it was not my intention. Mm, To to lose your marks because aside from aside from um, being a a leader mm-hmm. and going into politics like your mom back at home will not understand the, that when I was in <laughs> politics I dropped my GPA that, that's, the, that's the thing mm-hmm. even um, the people mm-hmm. who will look at your transcript after you will not tell them there is at no, this time yeah, I was, you know, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. campaigning mm-hmm. so as you go out to achieve your aspirations you need to strike a balance and mm-hmm. the fact that you cannot really have a balance mm-hmm. in one way or the other one of the ends will be affected 
is what will really um, disturb your mental health because you will start questioning whether this was worth it mm. or whether you had to do it the other way around. Mm. Okay, so set expectations, personal expectations. There's a video that I did about personal expectations. If you have so many expectations on yourself, it can take a toll on your mental health because we are living in a society where everybody has expectations of us. So it can affect us mentally. You can even get depressed. Yeah, people are, you know people are being depressed. Yeah, university actually. It's, I feel like university is when depression is at the peak. Yeah. And you know, to make matters worse is once you are out there in the face trying to be yourself, achieve your goals, mm. try to keep up with your grades, there is no one who can actually understand that you also get sad or you also get depressed. Mm. So which is also an issue because True. you cannot really get help. Like no one really makes sense out of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially in in a country like Uganda or even in a continent like Africa. The I don't know how I can tell my personally, I don't know how I can tell my dad that daddy I have Uncle Bad. <laughs> oh, oh what? <laughs> oh what? That's daddy, it. I need money for therapy. What therapy? <laughs> I think I think you um share the same sentiment of your African parents. You cannot start telling them that you're depressed until it is until maybe you have as big a big like suicide attempt. Or maybe even people who have committed suicide, hmm? mm-hmm. it's because they have they don't have the audience. People are not understanding, but you know this thing can take a toll on you. So um, I was telling you at the beginning of the show that what makes adulting has come for me. I think is the fact that we are expected to be mature, hmm? mature, and yet maturity takes growth, and yet growth. Is painful. You kind of have to unlearn some things and relearn. It's a an en- never-ending cycle of schooling. Life is a very never-ending cycle of schooling. And something like campus now, um, the campus days of when our parents were in school, is not the campus days. It's not the same time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And things have changed. Things are evolving. Like the world is moving so so fast. I mean, you're in campus, but the person you seated next to, you're going to compete with them for a job, but this person may be joined after a diploma and you kind of have to compete for the same job space. This person is maybe working or studying, they're gaining experience, you're not gaining. So you, aside from all the, I have to perform well and you have to compete with this person and you want to beat that expectation. You want to, it's too much, it's too much. I wish our parents could understand. Uh, Another question I want to ask is, you know, Friends, friends, who your company really most of the times determine who you become, how you excel, what you eat. Your lifestyle mm-hmm. at campus is really going to be determined by the company you keep. I in high school, you mean you're with these people confined in the same space for six years. Mm-hmm. You have no choice but to be their friend. But here we're at campus, you can be friends with someone in another university. Yeah. You can be friends with someone who's out of campus. You can be friends with someone who's way older than you, and it's up to you. So, talk, tell me about friendships mm-hmm. while at campus and their effect on mental health. Um, yeah, first of all, I think um, it depends on the person you are and your intention, mm-hmm. something you intend to have achieved before you leave campus. Because I feel like, personally, I've been so, is it? rare a bit rare as far as um this let's go how let's go out friendships mm. go hang out mm. let's go drink like <laughs> in that section of university life uh-huh. i think i scored zero point zero 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 one percent because um it's not that um i don't have that time but more of when i joined campus the first people i i go to know in moves the people who are my friends now are so much bent onto the side of academics. Uh-huh. I mean, you seem passionate about books and the people I move around school with, they're also into books. So, yeah. which is one of the things that helps me to keep up with my grades as uh-huh. I do other things. Then from like um, friends that are from other universities, those ones I've met 
most of them through my political spaces. So all I'm trying to say is, um, in the end, your intention of life sometimes determines who your friends are. Mm. Because um, if, if I'm in political spaces, that kind of um, emotional attachment I have with these people will carry me through mm. the political agonies and all. Whereas if I'm hustling with books, things are not working out, I know who to talk to because they will carry me exactly mm. through that. But if you have um, friends that are total opposite of you, I mean, yeah. imagine I have to talk about how how my political um, ambitions are just dying every other day and you've never taken up any political space. Yeah. You would just not be in position to help me. So I think one of the things that have helped me keep up with my mental health is um, a good selection of friends mm. based on what exactly I go into. Okay, so you, uh, you talk about one academic circle and two mm. political circles, like those are very pressure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ever feel that pressure among your academic friends to compete with them? Um, um, I want to be honest, being a uh, Top tier students in uh, academics. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, okay. Right. I just, I just want to be honest. Uh -huh, please, just, it's just, okay. Just no when problem. you no see problem. like a streak from your academic friend when mm. they are reading, it does not leave you the same. You just yeah. feel the pressure, yeah. and you know, like this person is doing something they are reading, and yeah, I need to do something. So you either engage with them so that they discuss what they discuss, yeah. what they studied, or yeah. you find out. Because mm. um, honestly, like honest, honest truth is you just can't be comfortable when your academic friends are doing everything they can to excel. And yeah. Yeah, you're so engaged. So there's always that pressure. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think it's not competition. I think it, it's mm. not competition. It's like the pressure to like match up so that yeah. you know you don't want to be left behind you, don't you want to them be to you, you want to be in their circle because they are your friends you rely on them so after school after school are you going to keep being friends to these people um yes um we do you we see yourself that i see myself with this like you know you see your friends like there is a circle of friends you you look at and imagine like 10 years from now, yeah. because um, as you engage with these people, they are also intentional about their lives. There yeah. is where they see themselves. So you are, as you are friends with them, you're pushing them to be who they see themselves in like 10 years time. And they're yeah. doing the same to you. So yeah. it is really hard to exclude those people yeah. in your future life. Yeah. Okay, that's, an, that's nice. I think you've said a very important aspect. I think that as a university student, while you're making friends, think about yourself, especially when you're in final year, think about yourself 10 years from now. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to interact with? Where do you want to work? What kind of life do you want to lead? Do you see the friends you have now? There, like with you there. If you don't, then you need to kind of like check, in, you know, check or Maybe you start concluding your contract. <laughs> it's like some sort of contract. Like start saying your farewell slowly. You remember? Um, if you've been watching this, following this whole mental health short series, you could, I, this is where I talked about friendships and how you can unfriend those bad friends. You can go back in that video and then maybe you'll see. Huh, Julia, you talked about politics. Politics has a lot of um, expectations. It's on expectations, of course. As a young girl in politics, you're exposed to so much. I was in politics <laughs> for a bit, and hmm, you get exposed so much to different people. People who, first of all, are politicians by career, by choice, <laughs> by, they breathe, eat, sleep politics, and it can take a mental toll on you. And then there are people who are supporters, they don't. They're not necessarily interested in politics, they're interested in Julia as a person. And you're supposed to give them time, you're supposed to buy time from your books, from your fr academic friends, mm -hmm. from your family to be with them and maybe entertain them so that you know, they can keep being Julia people. So how do you do that? How do you balance all that? Does mm -hmm. it take a toll on your mental health? No politics. Mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> the honest truth is that politics has 
taken a big toll on my life. Mm. Like emotionally, you feel it because like you said, every vote matters mm. and everyone out there wants you to be who they want you to be. So yes. they just cannot take who you are. Even if your intentions are clear, you just want to serve People will judge you from how you look, how you stare, how you smile, how you walk, how you dress. And this is not everyone's um, judgment. It's individual judgment. So as you dress, you're thinking, how will Edna? Okay, I'm going to meet Edna. Will Edna like how I've dressed? But again, you're not, you're not only meeting Edna, you're meeting other people. So the thought of trying to keep up with everyone's opinion of you really sucks. Yeah. Like in reality, even mm. if politics aside, mm. the moment you start to feel that you are living your life for others, it's mm. just... It takes that time. Exactly. It's, mm. it's hurting, it's breaking, which would not have been the case, but that's politics. That's yeah. politics. And um, it's a bit not... Not likely to separate leadership from politics from mm. university onwards. So we just have to learn and just keep in there as long as you end up attaining the position and Absolutely. serving the people. But the process, the process does not leave you the same. Absolutely. Yes. And it's it's a bit more challenging because um there are no role models, people who've been through the process that are willing to hold your hand mm. and walk you through. Mm. Yeah, so in most cases, you are holding your own hand <laughs> and yeah, yeah. carrying yourself through the toes. And every time talking to yourself that, you know what, this is yet a new day, just giving the affirmations yeah. to yourself. But it's really not easy. Like you have to be, what I pick from you is, you have to be there for yourself. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you really do. You have to be in a very strong mental state in order for you to... That means yeah. your academics shouldn't be stressing you, your family shouldn't be stressing you, your friends shouldn't be stressing you, you shouldn't be stressing about where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat. Yeah. What should be stressing you is politics so that you can be able to hold yourself um, through that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we've talked about friends, we've talked about family, we've talked about, you know, side, you know, <laughs> politics and, you know, uh, what you do outside campus. I think campus life is fun. Yeah. Well, I think it's fun. Very. I think it is. Um, it's very, I would have asked Julia about social life, but I'm not going to ask because I know it's dead. <laughs> no, it's a dead. <laughs> what she said, she said it's dead. Like, but Thanks you have that, friends. Me. <laughs> Let me see. But you have friends who have this social life. Mm -hmm. And you're their age mate. I mean, you're seeing your age mates going out to, from bar to bar, party after party. <laughs> Do you want any... Weekending. Any, yeah, weekending, <laughs> you know. Do you, at any one point in your campus life, feel like you're missing a stage? Do you sometimes compare yourself to them? Do you, do you, do you sometimes feel the urge to maybe fit in? Because you can't fit in. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm <laughs> doing myself. I can't. But do you sometimes feel like the urge of... Yeah, I, I keep telling myself, this is an experience I should go for. But <laughs> again, I'm fully moved. Yes. I have, I have some that actually in, within my inside circles. Mm -hmm. But for them, they just know how to draw the line. When mm -hmm. it's enjoyment, it's enjoyment. And when it's um, serious yeah. academics, it's books. But again, when you see their stories, man, I feel like... Social media. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Guys, this, my next question is going to be about social media. Yeah. So do you sometimes see maybe the social media updates and feel like, man, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> really social media is playing a very big role in making us rethink our lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you see someone really enjoying their life and like, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you don't know how to really save the impact of social media in your life, you may end up redirecting your life in a totally sure. different Absolutely angle. True. And campus coming from Mobs, Edna, if you do not have 
self control <laughs> you've yeah. lost it yeah the moment i joined moves in my first year girls dress <laughs> yeah i've seen everybody knows everybody yes. that knows bakery university business school knows girls know how to dress up like girls. i could never go to moves to even see a friend okay yeah. i could go but like in the night where they don't see me <laughs> So when I joined the university, I started feeling like, am I in a wrong place? Mm-hmm. Like, of course there is a section of people, but that general picture about more yeah. girls is it's like more of a competition kind of a thing. Mm. People really do their best in dressing. People come to class sometimes with makeup. People just look perfect with their lives. Mm-hmm. Many people drive, so if you really are not focused, you may end up accepting, absorbing all the pressures in and just end up doing whatever you have to do to keep up with their, their standards, which is actually hard unless mm-hmm. you're doing it in, in a wrong way. So campus life is fun, it's fun, and I really respect people who know how to balance enjoyment. And, 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 and the academics. But to me, um, coming from a very re- religious home, it's also another pressure of me not ever imagining myself next to a bar or in a bar. Yeah. Drinking or... You have very strict spirits. Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay. You have not had about romance <laughs> kids being the life of the party. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's a personal choice. It goes up to mm. I think it goes back to personal choice. Like yeah. Me as Julia do I see myself fitting? You go there, of course you might go there and see yourself mm. You're sleeping in that. For example, why are you sleeping in that bar? You've gone to the bar just to feel, maybe to make your friends feel at home, and then you end up sleeping. That's not your space. Leave. Yeah. Go to the next phase. Like there are so many. Campus life, I think, gives us. I feel like gives us an opportunity to try so many niches until you like find a place where you're comfortable. Yes, and that is where people lose it on university. I, I feel like it's a, it's a very like just like you said there are very many options for you to mm. have fun you don't have to necessarily go drink yourself to flying out of uganda yet you are in uganda <laughs> <laughs> yes people have fun in different ways so yeah. if you can um explore what gives you fun while trying to do your other things it works out for you because personally i just love like friendship dates and it just gives me the feeling of I'm actually having fun and spending yeah. quality time with yeah. my friends. Yeah. So many people do things differently. Yeah. But where it kicks in into your mental health is you trying to do what your friends are doing. Your friends are doing. Yeah. yeah. You have to find your niche, like where you feel comfortable. Not where your friend feels comfortable, where you as a person feels comfortable. There's so many things. There's church that people go to church. And yeah. You and feel then... at the bottom, like me. I am at the peak when I'm in church. So, and then there are people who have fun when they go to the bar. There are people who go, um, go to evil. So my friend, <laughs> go to those, go to evil. If you feel bored, that's not your niche. Even if you're living, five of your friends there for you, you go to maybe to a church chivul or a church, maybe a crusade or a fellowship. If you feel comfortable there, please, that may be your niche. Even if you're alone, you stand alone but as long as you're comfortable it's about being comfortable not making the other people comfortable because when you live for other people's lives you might in the end lose yourself yeah that's me you. lose yourself to like depression suicide yeah so julia um i think we've talked about social media which i want mm. to be our last question social media nobody i believe that nobody posts their downside on social media okay they're there but few, extremely few, and they censor what they, people show you what they want you to see. It's like a television, you know? When we see that you're more interested in this thing, we'll give you more of that, yeah? It's like mm. somebody is creating a movie on social media or a profile of their life. That's why they're called profiles. What they want to be included on their profile is what they will show you. That's not a true life. So I think that live your life like the easiest thing to be is to be yourself right yeah be be yourself don't have to impress anybody nobody cares if you you just ask your closest friend if they care they don't care nobody cares just 
live your life, be yourself. So, um, I'm supposed to ask Julia what she would tell a senior six person. <laughs> Someone in senior six back, I mean, I've had the longest vacation. I've seen senior six vacation on Twitter. What are you doing on Twitter? <laughs> I mean, uh, they had the longest vacation. Yeah. Now they're going to join campus. What what would you tell such a senior six practice? Um going to join mobs. Going to join mobs. I have one who is joining university and I think I was also three years ago what I tell her. Um it's it's all on them. Like there are very many pressures out there, there are very many expectations that you have to meet from people to yourself. But it's all on you. Once you join university it all starts with you and the people you decide to bring in your circle. Once you really attract people who are the total opposite of you, people who are who really don't mind whether they, as long as they just have a past degree, then you it will be hard, like really hard if you are really intentional about your academics. Mm -hmm. So in, in case you know the kind of life you want to have, at campus, you want to, the kind of grades you want to live with, the kind of spaces you want to participate in, go have fun, just draw the line between fun and your intentions out of um, campus. Most importantly, do not lose yourself for anything. This is just a journey. Yeah. When you would be leaving a moves anytime soon. You know? Yeah, but how you live actually matters. Yeah. Because you may live and then the things you did haunt you for the rest of your True. life. Yeah. For example, if you chose to um, sleep around with sugar daddies and have the iPhones and everything. So one next after moves, I mean, you there, there could be scars that you've put on yourself yeah, that right. will haunt you yeah. for the rest of your life. Mm. So... As you have fun, as you live or as you join university, just remember that one day you're going to be leaving. And how you live determines so much about what next after university. True. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. How you live determines what next after university. Like it's just a step. You know how you finished kindergarten? It's just a step. But you see, a step is why? Because it's teaching you a lot of things, a lot of things. So how you live determines what you will become. We wind up our show today. Thank you for sticking with us if you're sticking if you if you reach the end of this show. Um Julia, I'm still with Julia. <laughs> what would you tell a fourth year student? Okay, a final year student um who's about to finish campus but they've been living a life to impress others, their friends. Um they've been living a life they don't have spending the money they don't have. Really, um, and right now it has like caught up with them that life is about to get real. How, and they're depressed, they're giving up on life. I think they develop, some of them that I've interacted with develop a I don't care attitude of I don't care, I really, I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Yet life is actually just starting good. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what would you advise such a, a person? Um, so sadly, majority of the students fall in that category. Mm. But um, it's not about find the degree ending or whatever you've been studying. Because um, life itself, even outside school, just like you said at the beginning, it has learning and unlearning. Mm. So the moment you realize that you messed up, it's never too late for you to pick yourself up. Mm -hmm. and try to start over again True. because the minute you stay in that corner i mean for how long are you going to hide and keep regretting all that you did try to uh, beat yourself um up no down <laughs> yes and encourage yourself and you know you did all these things but all that is in the past what happens to you in the future depends on the decisions you make right now when mm. you have realized and to all those that have actually not gone that other, that, that have not taken that other journey, um, it's, it's, you shouldn't, I mean, you should learn from these people. Yeah. yeah. Just encourage yourself to stay the course, stay intentional, and it will all pay off. Yeah. <laughs> stay the course, encourage yourself, pick yourself up. It is never too late. I told you, after campus, life has just started out. 
telling you. <laughs> yeah. Life has actually just started. You you know how you were like in campus, you're like the highest studied person. Now imagine you're in P one. Now P one of life, real life. At campus, you ask your parents for tuition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your parents probably pay a hostel fee. They even give you pocket money. They might buy you a dress, a shoe. Now, here everything is on you. you. Your rent, your food, who you're talking to. Even meeting people, you have to pay money. <laughs> guys. Anyway, it's a beginning of life, so pick yourself up. Don't give up. It's too early. And those who are enjoying life, enjoy your life. Enjoy life, but uh, there's like draw a line. Yeah. I think let me like take you back as I conclude about friends. Um, there'll be friends have like categories of friends. Uh, these my friends are for partying. I mean, when, <laughs> partying yeah. when it comes to education, these are my kind of friends. When it comes to my career or professional life, these are my friends. When it comes to my personal life, who's going to um, my clothes are in a circle that when I have a problem, I run to them. These are my friends, and those are the ones that you need to like keep closest, but then the other ones become like acquaintances. So, have use that your campus life, final year at campus life to you know distribute those kinds of friendships because some of these friends that you have, you're going to drop them as life goes on. That's the yeah. reality, you're going to be with them because your life is going to change. So, thank you, Julia, for getting our show <laughs> with your presence and thank you for the work you're doing in moops thank you for um i see you doing a lot of mental health work <laughs> in moops yeah. so thank you so much and yeah julia yeah. is on social media you can find her there and yeah you can also find her in moops thank you for sticking with us don't forget to subscribe if you are new to join the, the mental health show family we have like a click so don't forget to <laughs> Subscribe. You can like, comment, and share to a friend who might need this video. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, which is at Faraja Television, on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, for your daily news updates. Bye-bye.